One of the most commonly asked questions I get and topics that get brought up to me are about the train canopy that I'm running on the nav. I did do a couple of videos on it initially when I first got it, but I've had it on the car about six months now. Gave it a good workout out the bush, smashed it around, did a few things and made a heap of upgrades to it. And give my pros, cons, thoughts. Go through the Bushman fridge, because everyone asks me about that all the time and just give a general rundown of the whole thing. Starting with the basics, the tray is 1650 mil long and then the canopy is 1200 mil long. The whole thing is made of alloy. It was made locally where I live in Port Macquarie by G-Works. I did do a video on the build process of this. I'll put that in the description below. So if you want to see the whole build in detail, you can check it out there. I'll run through all the modifications we've done to it, starting with the outside, and we'll go through the inside after. So with the 1650 tray and the 1200 canopy on top, that left 450 mil down the end. We have a jerry can holder on each side. I keep 20 litres of water in one and 20 litres of diesel in the other. They have a latch and lock on top. Fold them down, grab your stuff out. And then in the middle, I've got the spare wheel. So that's a full 33 inch tire up there. And then I've got a drift uh, dirty clothes slash rubbish bag down the back. Basically just chuck all my rubbish in there really in some spare bits and pieces. And then there is some empty space down the end of the tray here, which I do really like because it means, you know, you can sit your water bottles, drinks on it. If you want to prepare a bit of food here or get a bit of gear ready, you've got the room you need to do so. Trundle drawer down the back. We didn't actually go one in the end, so that's just a fill-in piece of material there, whatever, with your number plate on it. The main reason, while it would have been good, is they are a lot of weight. And one of the main goals of this build was to keep weight down. I think your trundle drawers come in at about, I think it's 60 to 80 kilo range, depending on how long you have them. Because of the runners, the runners are the heaviest things because they have to be highly rated runners to support all your weight. So we just figured it wasn't worth it in the end. One of the main goals of this build was to always find that balance between having a decent amount of room to store all my stuff in there for our bigger trips, but then not going overboard with the weight to go over the GVM of the vehicle and to not affect how it handles on the tracks too much. Hence the bit of a shorter tray and then the small to mid-size, I guess you'd call it, canopy. And I'm actually super happy with the size we went for and how it all turned out in the end. That's one of the questions I always get. Do you regret the size? Do you wish you went smaller? Do you wish you went bigger? And honestly, I think that we nailed the size. I've got a good amount of room in there, but the car still handles really well on the tough tracks, on wheel lifts, ruts, big lean, steep stuff. I did get some under tray side toolboxes though. These things are super lightweight. I think they're only a few kilos each. So you just unlatch them. There's not heaps of room in them because they're sort of small, uh, shaped up ones, whatever you want to call it. But I'm able to fit my recovery gear in there, uh, some more recovery gear on the other side and a few tools and spare bits and pieces. Dust, water seems to stay out of them really well. They've got good seals on them there. And I was originally concerned about smashing them off on the tracks, but I've never hit them or come close to them because they do sit so high up. We've got the three-piece guards, I guess you'd call them. And then one thing I've noticed about these is I have smashed them on ruts and banks a few times now. You can see this one, it's got a decent sized dent and bend in it there. But what I've noticed is they don't crack or break or nothing goes wrong with them majorly. They just get little dints and bends in them because I have seen other ones that get big cracks in them once you smash them on banks and ruts. I've got the Drifter Wildlands rooftop tent mounted on the canopy. I think the weight of these, they used to be 51 kilos, but this is the updated version. And I think it's a couple of kilos heavy. I think it's around the 53, 54 kilo mark. But people always ask me how I mount things up on here, so I'll run through that. Now, it may be a little bit hard to see, but basically the canopy has two channels running across the top of it. 
There they are there, one there, one over on the other side. Now I'm not sure what the exact weight rating on these was quite high. I think it's like around the 300 kilos or something you can have up here. Then you obviously put your nuts and bolts down in the channel. And then we put bars across that were sort of bolted into the channel. So one bar across here, one bar across up the front. And then we're able to clamp the rooftop tent onto those bars that were there. So that's the mounting system they use up on top of these canopies. Then obviously you pretty much bolt any sort of roof rack or platform or bars or whatever you want into that to sort of best work out your setup. One of the more recent mods we've done to it is a water tank underneath, 40 litres, and then runs off a pump. So you got your tap here, turned on, pump kicks in, obviously pumps your water out. So that's nice fresh drinking water. And then I have a mains switch under there so I can turn the whole system on and off if need be. Now to get the water in is over on the opposite side. So I've got a setup here for it, um, which is just a submersible pump, 12 volt one. Made a bit of a mess here all tangled up, but plug that in the back into my dual battery system. Hook your hose in, turn your tap on so the water can obviously go in. And then you can put that into a creek or into a bucket or into like a, my 20 litre water bottle. Turn it on and then you fill your water tank up. Food grade hose, this is a Seaflow submersible inline pump, 12 volt. And then I have a filter here for it as well, depending on where I'm filling up if I need to filter the water. So this is the best water filters. With the 40 litres underneath and then a 20 litre jerry can down the back there. Gives me 60 litres that I take away on most trips. And then I can put another 20 litres water on the other side if need be to give me 80, but then I just lose a bit of fuel capacity. All right, we'll open it up and have a look inside. Starting with the passenger side. 85 litre upright Bushman fridge, pull out drawer and table. So with the drawer and table slash kitchen set up as this is where I keep all my kitchen gear. Drawer. Table. Perfect to basically pull up your fridge there, you got all your cutlery, make a bit of lunch, make some food, dinner even, whatever it needs to be, but that works really well. And then I just keep my bedding up on top of that to fill up that space there. And then you can kind of see it there, it's actually got like a little rim around the top of it there, so you can sort of keep gear in there if need be and it gets held in there. People have been hammering me with questions on this upright fridge and what I think of it, so I'll spend a few minutes going through that. But overall, I'm super happy with it over, over a chest fridge. I wouldn't go back, I, I love the thing. There was two main reasons that I went with it in the start. Number one and the biggest one was the weight. These weigh about 22-ish kilos. If you look at getting a chest fridge, the similar capacity, looking about a 30 kilo range. And then it's in there, you can't actually access it. So you've got to get a chest fridge out here, which means you need some sort of slide. Now I had just a standard slide, which they're about 20 kilos in themselves. I could reach in, but it was a bit painful to be honest. And then Kai couldn't reach in, my girlfriend couldn't reach in. So I was like the only one that could access the fridge. So that meant, you'd have to get a drop down slide, one that pulls out and folds down. Now those things are about 40 kilos, meaning you ended up with a chest, for a chest fridge, drop down slide 70 kilos or so, which was just insanity when it comes to weight, compared to the 22 kilos for this, and the price. These you're looking around $1,300, the other setup was gonna be two and a half grand or something, so quite a bit cheaper. G-Works, the guys who built the tray and canopy, built the surround for the fridge to keep it nice and safe, secure in there. Nothing can hit it from behind or fall down in there. Has a little shelf up on top there too to keep gear. I'm not sure I said, but they built this as well. So they sort of built the whole thing really. You probably can't see it because there's a mat here, but the canopy has, there's one there, has slots running through it that you then can fit, I can't remember the size, might be M8 bolts in it. And then that means, that's how all these things are mounted in there, through bolts in the channels in the floor. That's how that's mounted. Same with the fridge surround. And then the fridge is, um, looks like it's, I don't know how they did it, because they did it. I didn't really do any of this, to be honest. When I always say we, I meant they did the whole thing for me. 
It looks like it's Allen keyed into that fridge surround there. Open it up. I don't have heaps in there at the moment because we're not going on any, any trips at the moment. Like I still run it all the time. It doesn't run out of power with my dual battery setup. So you got a little freezer up the top there. I'm able to keep icy poles, a few frozen peas and food bits and pieces in it. Shelves here. I keep it on just over two about two and a quarter as the temperature seems to work well for me. One of the concerns I had and a lot of other people had is when you're on the tracks, this thing's gonna fall out and slide around everywhere. And honestly, it's been really great. I haven't had any problems with it. I've been on some maniac tracks now where I've smashed this car around and opened up the fridge and it's all good in there. One of the things I did do was I got some slide out drawers and containers. So I got these from Kmart and Big W. I think I got like these ones are big W and then the other style with Kmart. So I got a couple of those. I got like a pull out box there that goes down the bottom. Shells come out, sort of that style as well. But if you get some of those plasticky drawers and then you just like, I'll put an egg cart in there and then put a few things up the top. It actually holds in there really well and I've had no issues with that whatsoever. Another thing people asked was about, I'm standing here letting all the cold air out now, but people are saying it loses too much cold air when you open it, but I haven't experienced that problem or noticed that at all in regards to draining the dual battery system any quicker or having to run harder after I use it. I honestly, I have no complaints about this thing. <laughs> I'm just really happy I went with it and I really like it. I'll just run through a couple of questions on Instagram I got about it as well, and then we'll jump back into the overall train canopy. Can you buy them so the door opens the other way? You can actually remount, you can easily switch the door around. I haven't done it, so I don't know how you do it, but it just looks like you unbolt there and then bolt it over the other side, because my door opens that way. But you can have it so it opens the other way, but I don't know, that seems to work all good for me. What made you pick this brand? Uh, well, that was seemed to be the main brand, the Bushmans of upright fridges around. I didn't really hear of any other brands. Just, I don't know, from what I'd seen, everyone seemed to be using and recommending these ones. There's just a lot of questions about food being thrown around in there. Honestly, with the, as I said, with those plastic containers, <clears throat> you, don't, you don't even have to pack it that well. Honestly, a lot of time I just chuck stuff in there and it's never a problem. You don't have to play a game of perfect Tetris every time you want to go forward driving because it seems to go quite well. The only thing I'll notice is like the doors never open, the seal seems to be quite strong on it. Sometimes like when you open it up that may be just out a little bit like that but it can't go very far because the door's there. That's probably the only thing I've ever noticed. Like if you had a can up there then it may sort of get obviously thrown around a little bit but just you know pack it sensibly and you're all good. Like just how it is now, I'd take that four-wheel drive and open it up and it wouldn't be an issue. Just about mounting it, as I said, I don't exactly know because GRX is, but it's all fully bolted and mounted down. I'm assuming it's just bolted into the fridge surround, which, yeah, is bolted into the floor of the canopy. What does the power plug look like when it comes from factory? I think it comes with bare wires, and then we wired an Anderson plug in. Well, not me. I always say we, but obviously I didn't actually do it. But <laughs> Anderson plug, so wired there, comes out from the back of it just um, then into the setup there. Question about the door here, how does it latch or catch? It's just up the top there, and as you can see, it still seems to be quite strong and it holds well. I've never had problems with it open, just pushes there and clips in. And the seal seems to hold up really well around it. I know it probably sounds like I'm bragging here, like I work for, work for the company, but yeah, honestly, I just don't really have anything bad to say about it. It's probably one of my favorite modifications I've done. How many days food do you pack into it? I can fit us 10-ish days. If I wanted, I could probably try and push it up to two weeks if I needed to. But yeah, you can easily fit a good 10 days worth in there. The last thing I'll go through is how much power it uses. It seems to be a bit all over the place because obviously like right now it's not running because it's got enough cold air in it and it depends on the temperature of the day. But from speaking to people, when it's running, it seems to be drawing like two and a half to three-ish amps an hour. Like if I open up my dual battery system now and see what everything's on, see right now as it's sitting there, my dual battery system's on 99%. I think you can see that from the camera. The current it's drawing is 0.41 amps per hour. 
you know, same with dual battery system, it's got eight days and two days, two hours left. I won't obviously go through it all now, my whole dual battery setup. I did another video on that, but just the basics is it's a lithium setup set and it's a hundred amp hour battery. So that's how much power I'm working with. And with those lithiums, I think you can safely draw like 80% of them. So, you know, it gives me like 80 amp hours to work with. I did a couple of tests on it on a recent camping trip on my phone just to see what it would draw over time. So I took this screenshot here. If you can see, I'm just looking in the other camera here, but you can see that there. So that was at 7.16 p.m. of a night. My dual battery system had, was on 96%. It consumed four and a half amp hours. And then this was at 7.41 a.m. the next morning. It had con it had consumed 16.6 .6 amp hours, it was down 84% in the overnight period. This was like a coolish night, it was autumn, it wasn't winter, so that middle time of year. To see there, you know, I haven't really drawn that much overnight, the 12% of the dual battery system. And then I did another little test the next morning when we pulled up for brekkie in the sun, and we are there for a couple of hours, and we sort of had it open and shut all the time, just to see how that affected it. And it was a bit warmer then too. So when it pulled up was 9.19 a.m. The dual battery system it was already on minus 8.7 amp hours from the night before. That was us having brekkie. And then when we left at 11.28, so it's two hours and 20 minutes later, it lost minus 11.2 amp hours. So it only lost sort of two amps or something in that two hours and 20 minutes of having brekkie and then i did the same thing again having lunch so 11 56 a.m when it pulled up it lost minus one amp hours and then 157 so basically two hours late two hours later it lost minus 3.4 so in that two hours it lost a couple of amps again that was at lunchtime in the sun there but just a coolish autumn day so i lost my voice then <laughs> but Obviously in summer, it's going to use more and then in winter, it's going to use even less. So to me, it doesn't really seem like they use a massive amount of power. A couple of other things, so the Anderson plug here, so that's where my dual batch system comes into the canopy. I haven't really got any fancy setup at all here yet. That'll probably be a future thing eventually. Um, but I just have some USB charging points there, some 12 volt charging points there. And then my inverter and my 240 volt setup still in the car. It does have central locking on it. That hasn't been set up yet, but might do that eventually. Open up the other side here. There's not really as much going on here. Just sort of a big space where I've stacked all my stuff. So I've got my alley box there, camp chairs, tire, pressure, pump, pump up my tires, whatever that's called. <laughs> got my fire pit here. Uh, dirty clothes bag, and it's got a couple of drawer bags there, and then it gives me room to put more stuff in here than I need. I was originally thinking of sort of dividing it and then having a space one side and shelves the other. It's just more weight, and I kind of like having the full space here, being able to do what I want of it. It does get a bit messy at times on trips as I just start chucking things in, but it still gives me plenty of room there, and I can just you know, use it how I need it, and if I need to put bigger stuff in there, then I have the ability to do so. You can also see there's the back of that fridge surround, a bit of scratching there where the box hit it, but it's got holes on the back there, allows for that fan, there's a bit of a space there too, and you can see that up the top there, that bit of a shelf where you can stack stuff. Now I don't have the exact accurate weight rating of this thing unfortunately, but we estimated, loaded up, it's around the 350 kilo mark, and that's what we base the suspension off. I've recently upgraded my suspension down the back, so I'm running some long travel 700 mil Outback Armor shocks from Platinum Mechanical and Suspension, so it gives this thing monster flex now. Um, and then we had to change over the cores as well. I have three inch HD, so heavy duty flexi coils from PSR, and I think they're King Springs that they stock. So they're 510 mil free height, so I just had someone turn up, so I forgot where I was up to. I was talking about those springs. So those ones are the ones we got rated to 300 kilos. Rated for around the 300 kilo mark. 
and then we've got a little bit more weight on them than the 300 kilos but they are three inch that allows them to sort of sag down a little bit and balance out with the front but allow for all that travel I've got in the back there as well when I'm when I'm flexing through the tracks and stuff I don't exactly know because I'm not that great with <laughs> suspension stuff but it does seem to be working quite well for the moment those 300 kilo rated springs that just sag down a fraction they're only brand new so I think the back still does sit a slight bit higher then like all springs over time they should uh balance themselves out a little bit I'm just over here trying to get out of this wind. The wind's picked up quite a bit while I'm filming. Hopefully it hasn't been too noticeable on the camera. I want to get this done today, but because we've got a few days of bad weather coming after this. Continuing on with the weight topic, the GVM of this car is, I forget now, 2.91 or 2.92? 2.91 ton, I think it is, 2,910 kilos. Last time I weighed this thing when I had myself and Kai in it, full tank of fuel, all the water most of the camping gear but not all came in at 2820 kilos which left 90 kilos is it until i hit the gvm and i only had clothes and food to go so i feel like it just as long as i'm careful with packing it then i stay under the gvm i don't really need to do a gvm upgrade they're quite expensive and day-to-day -day driving it's definitely well and truly under it fully loaded for a trip would just people, fuel, water, everything, it gets very close, but providing I'm careful, then I can stay under. A lot of the weight on this car comes from everything else, not so much just the tray and canopy, all the mods and bar work and tires and everything I've done to it. I'll run through a few other things in regards to heat, it getting hot in the, in the canopy, I've never had that issue at all. I think one of the main things that helps me out there is the rooftop tent up on top, it acts as like a big sun shade over, the, over it. So it never really seems to get that hot in there at all, even in summer. On the tracks, in regards to making the vehicle less capable or more tippy of that bit extra weight, and obviously the weight is up a bit higher. At first, you could notice it a bit more. It's just like that first trip of getting used to it. Since then, don't have any issues at all. It doesn't worry me. I seem to be able to put myself on the same sort of leans and everything as everyone else. Keep up with everyone else just the same. So I feel like that hasn't negatively affected my ability on the tracks at all. Or if it has, it's been minimal. Train canopy holds the dust and water out really well. It's all fully sealed, so there's not actually any ventilation. They said they could do ventilation, but then once they do ventilation, you're going to start getting a bit of dust in there. And I haven't had any problems not having ventilation. But yeah, fully dry in there all the time through all weather and keeps the dust out really well. Another question has been, do I have any regrets from the old setup I have? I guess it was that little bit lighter and that little bit less tippy on the tracks. But as I said, I kind of got used to this and I feel like it doesn't really hinder me that much. I guess for the old tub, you just chuck things in the back, but everything was always getting wet and muddy in there and it was a bit painful. <laughs> I much prefer this option. Like there's always gonna be a couple little bits and pieces that were better in a different style of setup. For me and what I do, this has been the much better option. The cost, for the tray and canopy I put in the build video I did of it. So if you want to check the costing, maybe go back to that one. Because I spoke to G-Works the other day and they said their prices have changed around a bit as the cost of materials and has gone up and things like that. So the cost of mine back six months ago is probably going to be a little bit higher now. But I'll put a link down below for their website slash form you fill out and then you can get a price if you want to know a price for... You, your car, you, four wheel you, putting one on your four wheel drive. If you want to know a price, I'll put the link to fill out the form. Wow, I don't know why I talk sometimes. <laughs> I think that's just about everything. I've probably rambled on for more than long enough, but hopefully that answered everyone's questions, ran through all the setup, my thoughts on it, the modifications we've done to it. I've had to pop over the shed here to try and get out of this wind. It's really picking up. I hope I'm not too dark here on this camera either. One last thought that just popped into my mind that people ask me is do they do things separately? And yes, they do. For example, you can just buy like a jerry can holder or the fridge surround off them. You can just buy individual parts off them. I put all the links from this video down below so you can get to see them or the old video I did on it or different details. I'll put the link for the fridge 
all the stuff I mentioned in this video. If you have any other questions, let me know, but hopefully you enjoyed. One last thing, I've been working hard the last month to organize some new products on the website. We got stubby coolers now, so you got the nav ones, so I don't know if you can see it in the sunlight there. We got the nav stubby coolers. These are high quality magnetic ones. And we got the MUX ones as well. So both of them will stick on your vehicle, stick on anything magnetic. We got brand new stickers, MUX and nav ones. And then we got magnets, which can also be used as coasters as well. So coasters slash magnets, whatever you want to use them for. We got the nav and the MUX one. They're available on the website now. So you got the single packs where you get one of each for $25. Or you got the double packs where you get the lot for $45. People have been asking me for stubby coolers for a long time and we finally got them. Goes a long way to support the channel. Thank you. Now I have, now I have, I have, I have, now I have, now I have, now I have. One of the most still, <coughs> one of the most, <coughs> ah. come on man. <sighs> and then I have a main switch up on in the... and this is the big one that everyone is asking me about and one of the questions and one of the questions that people have been asking me about is the containers and another question another question has been